Hello, I want to check in with everybody and give you some pointers about the assigned paper that's due Monday, November 5th. Um, please get it in by 5 p.m. I'm just asking you to email me those papers. Um, so a couple of things to keep in mind. One, I'm really looking for a well-developed thesis statement. When you think about what a thesis statement is, essentially it's just an answer to a question, and it's stated in brief form. So what really is the question that I'm asking you? In a general sense, I'm asking you to explain how capitalism and industrial capitalism in particular, how it started. And one manifestation of that is time discipline, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of focus. But really you're being exposed to two very general theoretical explanations as to how this thing started. One is a more material explanation provided by Marx, and the other more what I would call ideological explanation provided by Weber. I'm going to compare and contrast those two views again just a little bit more for you in this video lecture. Um, so at any rate, I want to see a thesis statement that, that gives your own take and your own opinion on this question. How did industrial capitalism begin? And you have two very contradictory in some ways, not necessarily. Um, Weber is not um, necessarily mutually exclusive of Marx's explanation. Um, but Marx is pretty clear that Protestantism and, and its growth is really an outcome of underlying material forces, whereas Weber is arguing that um, Protestantism is necessary, it's a necessary component, not a sufficient, but a necessary component in order to create capitalism and time discipline that comes along with it. Um, so what's your point of view? Which one of those two views seems correct? Which one of those two views makes most sense to you um, personally? So make sure you get that into a thesis statement. That thesis statement should be very explicit. Uh, I actually counsel students or advise students to write the phrase in this essay. I will argue that. So um, I encourage you to do that. In addition, um, make sure that you provide some context. So in the first paragraph or two, provide a setup for what the question is and your thesis statement. Then the rest of your paper is really building out that argument. So maybe three paragraphs that detail Marx's theory of change and three paragraphs that detail Faber's theory of change and then your own opinion and deal with some of those other um, more subsidiary questions that are included in, in the assignment. Um, one last point here uh, is that I want to make sure that you have understood and thought about the readings and, and you're able to apply those readings. So I'm really looking for some citations. My general rule of thumb is that you should have three to five references per page. Uh, it's a real rough rule of thumb. I don't sit there and count them, but I think in, in terms of what the higher performing students do, they really make sure uh, to show that they've done the reading. So give me some, quote, some quotations and give me some real evidence that you've done the reading. Now when you do quote, make sure that you also provide some interpretation and analysis. Obviously you don't want to just um, throw in a, a string of quotes without your own opinion about what that means. Um, Alright, so hopefully that gives you some ideas there about how to go about um, your paper. In addition, I want you to think through just one basic difference between Marx and Weber, and that is really their theory of historical change. For Marx, everything comes down to the mode of production and how classes come out of that mode of production. They struggle, and, and it's not always a linear struggle, right? In the case of capitalism, what happened, according to Marx, is that the lords kicked peasants off the land. Those peasants became a laboring class, which helped to fuel a growing capitalist class. And it's really the capitalists struggling against the lords, not the bourgeoisie, or I'm sorry, not the peasants struggling against lords, or peasants struggling against the bourgeoisie. It was really those two new elite classes that had emerged out of this economic change uh, that was caused by the enclosure movements. So again, for Marx, everything gets traced down to the mode of production. All right, and for, for Weber, um, sometimes, ideology or religion really has a causal force in history. So in this case, Protestantism, this belief that one's salvation was tied up in behaving in a methodical, time-disciplined time way, that was what was responsible for the creation of industrialization and, um, and for the modern world. 
So I hope you see those two really distinct differences. One other just point that I would make in passing is that for Marx, he really had this more progressive view of historical change that we were moving in a direction of progress uh, and that the world was getting better, humans were getting, um, I don't want to say smarter necessarily, but they were, they just through the, the uh, movement of history, were perfecting society. So um, that's a view that really Weber doesn't necessarily share, and you can see that again in the Iron Cage um, passage when he talks about no one really knows what's going to happen at the end of history because there is no end of history for, for Weber. It could be the rise of new ideas, um, maybe a re reversion back to traditional types of politics, or as he put it, sort of this iron cage where it's just mechanical petrification of this system, this impersonal system of capitalism. So he's got a more cyclical understanding and not a, not a clear idea that history necessarily works in a linear way. Hopefully some of those distinctions make sense and, uh, and you're well on your way to developing um, a thesis for your paper. If you do have any questions, feel free to email me and I look forward to seeing your work. All right, take care.